you're listening to the weekly darts cast 180 hello and welcome to a special bonus edition of the weekly darts cast as brought to you by dart wolf this is hannah the producer and i was lucky enough to be up in blackpool to interview some of the players and commentators for the pdc's first women's world match play coming up we have interviews with lisa ashton eileen DeGraff, laura turner katie sheldon Lorraine Winstanley, Chloe O'Brien, Jan Griffiths, Sky Sports reporter Polly James, and Talk Sport 2's Abigail Davis. So let's just jump right into it. All right, I am here right now with Lisa Ashton, number one seed this weekend. Lisa, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> Excellent, thanks for joining us. Um, we're just going to go back a bit because we've not talked to you in a while. <laughs> Obviously, you were the first woman to win your tour card through Q School, and uh, you were unlucky to not have kept it. I mean, it was a big push there at the end. Uh, is there any reflections from that time, any things that you learned from, from that experience? Oh, yeah, I've learned a lot playing on the Pro Tour and doing Q School. I've learned um, my game level's gone up. And I've learned you, you just keep fighting, and it's tough. It is really tough, but yeah, just keep going and uh, got to retain it. But that's his that's and you just got to keep going the way it does. <laughs> and then is it your goal to try to win it back? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I might have another go in January. Keep the men on the toes. But yeah, yeah. But I'm I'm enjoying what I, the opportunities I've got mm-hmm. now. But yeah, I'll think about that in January. But. You never know. And as you said, it seemed to unlock another level on your game. I mean, you were always one of the best, but sometimes, you know, some of those averages were out of sight. You're very disappointed that they weren't even all on, all on TV. That's the nature of streaming individual player championship <laughs> matches, I suppose. Uh, with that increase, can you think of anything that contributed to, to it? Is it just sink or swim because people throw on 100 plus average? you know on a weekend no you learn off it you know they're going to play well and all you can do is try your best and i know that them raising their levels bringing my levels up and i know i can hit 100 every year and i know i can hit more consistent that way so all i do is i take it on the chin there's no point bashing yourself up for it you learn and you progress and that's what i've done with it and then this year you've also participated in the seniors tour what's that experience been like for you that's good, yeah. The opportunity's there now. I can play in it for us over 50. We're not thrown on the scrappy. It's another opportunity. We're another step for us to go in that direction. And it's great to see play with players I've watched on the TV. And now I can play against them and uh, see them where I haven't seen for ages. And, of course, at the seniors' match play, you knocked out Paul Hogan and then you knocked out Larry Butler before running afoul of Wolfie in some weird form. <laughs> How did those wins compare to others you've experienced? Is there another level based on having seen them before? Yeah. It was night. I was just happy to get some wins on the seniors uh, on the stage to play back on the stage because I've not done much stage um, lately. So it was nice to get two wins under my belt. Good practice for the match play. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I ran into Wolfie. My form wasn't there and that, and Wolfie played well. But you just learn from it and you get on to the next one. So hopefully, uh, improve another step further and next time I play on one. And then with the PDC Women's Series, PDC also just announced that they're extending it to 24 events and they're going to have the match play again next year. Thoughts on where the PDC is deciding to take the women's game? It's brilliant uh, for us to offer this opportunity, but now they're telling us they're extending it and they're back next year. It just shows they're opening the doors for us. That's what they've asked us to do and we're doing it. We can't ask for anything better, so as long as the ladies keep backing it and they keep going, we never know what the future is with them. And overall, how are you finding the setup of the women's series? Is it, I mean, a lot of the women have come from WDF, so they say it's so different, but having come off a tour card, is it run quite similarly to standard players' championships, or is it different as well? No, it's exactly the same. It's run like a pro tour, challenge tours, they're all run the same, the BDC, it's fantastic. And the ladies are enjoying it, uh, it's professionally run. You've got space, you've got everything, it's brilliant. And the ladies, that's what they like about it. So the more ladies are coming over, they're happy with it, and they, it shows what you can get. So it's fantastic the way they run it, and we're all appreciating it. And then as fans are starting to see more and more of the ladies through the PDC streams, uh, how exciting is it for you as the veteran of the game to see not only more and more women come from more and more countries, but also, especially looking at the field this week, more and more ages involved? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I know I'm one of the older ones, but it just shows you never give in. 
the more ladies where we think, oh, no, no, you keep going. You'll get there. I'm still going. I'm still trying my best, still winning some, fingers crossed. But it's just showed if I can inspire the young uns, some of the youth or the ladies, just keep going. It's a step further, and that's all I want to do. But, yeah, the more youth are coming, it's brilliant. <laughs> and what is it like getting to play in those women's series with your daughters? So we've seen them <laughs> make their go of it. <laughs> Obviously, it's an experience that's reasonably unique to you and perhaps Lorraine with Josie. What's that situation like for you? It, it, it's good. It's nice. Uh, they played with me on the WF, but now they're following me also in the women's series. It's fantastic. Like, my daughter's had a baby and my daughter had come in. They're coming back. But it's nice to show the stuff playing in the ladies series now and coming back on it like Josie and like I said I've got my we have other ones who want to come through and, and play but it's brilliant as long as the you keep going that, that's the future so yeah the more we get the better and um, when you're playing against say a younger player with experience that comes with that have you ever offered any words of advice any wisdom any just basic mentorship there or is it is there always the sportsman fear that if you give the advice it's the piece that comes back to bite you when they crush you next time <laughs> no I always hope I've like Katie when she first out she asked me advice I'd give her advice I'll help anybody give them advice because that's what it's for I asked it when I first set off and I got it so it's just give back what somebody gives me and help them on it's just when you play them you just learn to turn off play your game because that's what it's about end of the day it's no age group it's just two players against each other when you come off I still give advice still friends with them and that's how we all should be fantastic and where do your priorities lie with darts in the future and like your goals obviously there's a million opportunities open to you now so how do you pick and choose <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely stick with the women's series. It's doing well, and the opportunities are all there. What they're giving us, match play, and everything like that. I'd love to be the first on it, and that the seniors. I'd love to just do step further with what I'm doing on there. And you never know, WDF and PDC. I'll just take where I can go. <laughs> and then, based on the match play final field, did any of that surprise you at all? No, all the ladies are rising. Absolutely, there's no easy games in it. They're all going to the rising, rising the levels, playing the games. Like some names who were in there weren't even there on the last day, and they've worked so hard to get up there. It just shows it's ups and downs, but the ladies are determined. They're playing well, and their level games there, and that's why they're in it. And as you're fairly local to Blackpool, would you consider this kind of your home game, the Lancashire Rose making a debut for, you know, the PDC's first televised season or series for the women, you know, as in Lancashire? <laughs> is it a kind of home field advantage of sorts? <laughs> it is, yeah. It's nice to have one up here. More my hometown. I'm only like half an hour, 40 minutes down the road for me. So it's brilliant for me. I just hope the crowd all support us and support all the ladies and that uh, we have a good tournament. And then finally, after all of the achievements that you've achieved, how is being in the first PDC televised full women's series? They've only done bits and pieces before, you know, that famous final with Stacey here. What is it like to be a part of that history and as the number one seed? Oh, it's brilliant. Absolutely, you can't ask for anything better. No, I'm just happy I'm here on my own to playing in it. So I'm great, yeah. I'm looking forward to it now. Fantastic. Good luck for tomorrow. Thank you again for your time. Cheers. Thank you. All right. We are joined right now by former world master and the most recently England National Women's Singles runner-up, Eileen de Groff. Eileen, thank you so much for your time. Of course. So we've not had you on the show before, which is really our bad. It's different conflicts with that. So could you mind just telling us, for the listeners who maybe don't know, how you got started in darts? Uh, how I got started? Uh, because of my ex, uh, he just uh, take me to a, a, a little pub and uh, I beat uh, most of the guys there who was practicing for a lot of year years. And uh, that's why I know uh, yeah, that I can play, play darts, so uh, yeah. Excellent. And when you first started playing, was there any players that you looked up to, or was it kind of just so foreign that it was kind of pave your own way? No, I didn't know any darts players. I don't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the first time I have to play French Sunsla, I didn't know who she was or Trina Gulliver, so yeah. <laughs> well, for some level of no expectation to help go into it, perhaps. Yeah. 
And then with uh, the WDF site, obviously, categorizes your wins as best they can. And right now, you're at a nice round number of 65 tournament wins for your career from 2011. Uh, what has it been like traveling to all of these tournaments around Europe and basically, for those t years, for the stats, dominating them? Uh, yeah, it, it's lovely. I, I like it very much, but uh, it's a lot. It's really a lot uh, because you miss uh, family time, you miss barbecues, you miss birthdays and everything. But I love it. I really love it. And is the missing the family time the hardest part of that being the darts player? Is it, uh, is it a multitude of things? Yeah, it's a it's a lot. It's it's also because I now work after the corona. I had no job because we couldn't travel in any, uh, at any place and everything. So uh, I was back at nurse. So uh, I'm now a nurse again. So I have the weekend uh, nursing and then playing darts, nursing, playing darts. So <laughs> it's really a lot. Yeah, and I was going to say um, that away from the hockey that you've gone back to nursing. So obviously the pandemic gave everybody a career break, as it were, yeah. whether they wanted it or not. Yeah. <laughs> how was how was that experience with going back to nursing? Obviously, it, it, it seems stressful, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it's really stressful because also, uh, yeah, also uh, about Corona and everything. Uh, everyone went went sick. Uh, you have to work more often and everything. But it was nice to uh, work with elderly people and everything. But I didn't thought I was doing that job again. <laughs> <laughs> Surprises for everyone a bit. Yeah. And then earlier this year at the Lakeside, you knocked out Mikuru Suzuki, who is a defending champion. Uh, was knocking out the champion off the bat a confidence boost for the rest of the tournament? Yeah, it was really a confident boost. Uh, no, it was really confident because, uh, yeah, she's world champion and everything, and everyone, everyone thought uh, she's going to win and everything. But, uh, yeah, I did it, and that's, that was really good for my feeling, yeah. Uh, and then in the women's series, you've made the final twice, uh, and then you've also made, believe it or not, uh, 11 out of the 16 events, you made it to the last eight. So obviously a really consistent, firm record throughout all of the women's series with that. Um, what is it like playing in these events? How do they differ from your standard WDF, BDO? What's the feeling like? Oh, I like it. I really like it. I was two weeks ago in Wales. Oh my God, it was... No, it, wa it wasn't good. The organization, they tried their best, but the venue, it was... Yeah, I can't say it on the radio or stuff, the world, but it, w it wasn't good. And uh, you had to wait uh, longer because there wasn't a lot of ladies. And yeah, at PDC you have four tournaments, so I like playing a lot. And that was really nice. And it's all good organization, very quick. So that's really really nice. But the uh, VDF, they they are doing a good job. And then next year they've said that they're going to expand the event to 24 as well as include the match play and that the qualifications for the match play start from the very next series. Yeah. What are your thoughts on expanding that field? Oh, yeah, I'm going to play everything if I can. <laughs> I have to uh, look which dates I can play because I also have to work at the nurse. So, uh, yeah, we will see. But I like the tournament and it's good prize money, uh, good experience, a lot of great uh, dart players. <laughs> It's a lot of different darts players because you don't know everything who's going to the PDC tournament. There's a lot of different ladies, so you have to be very sharp. Yeah. And then it seems like there's more and more games on the calendar for the ladies. And also if you're involved in the WDF and the PDC and you're playing for your country with some of the events and stuff, how is it like trying to prioritize those as well as the career? Is it just wh which comes first in your mind if you have to choose? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not going to choose because I want to play uh, PDC and I want to play, uh, play the other tournaments. And if I look at the tournaments, I can do both because you have 10 boxes, you have to fill the points. So you don't have to uh, play every tournament. Yeah. Excellent. And then how exciting is it to be in the field for the first ever fully televised PDC women's event? I mean, are you able to like enjoy being a part again of darting history or is it just kind of daunting to think about that there's a new thing on the, on the stage? <laughs> Yeah, I like. I really like it. It's really uh, a crazy uh, tournament with lots of audience and everything. 
but I don't know if I enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like the small tournaments, the really small tur- <laughs> tournaments in the bar, and you get to know a uh, lot of new people and everything. And if you play here, you just play, you just do your thing. It's just uh, a work thing, and but uh, uh, yeah, I always want to win, and I like the game, and I hope uh, I can play some games. Yeah. Maybe if you win it, maybe it'll be a new favorite. <laughs> yeah, maybe. You never know. <laughs> never know. And do you have a favorite player to uh, play against when you're playing? A uh, favorite player? It doesn't have... It could be a uh, playing style. It could just be they're fun to play uh, against. I like playing Lisa, but she's always throws amazing against me. And <laughs> she, uh, it's always... And if I see the, the games before or the games after... They are more or less, and then I told her, why, why, why? She saves it for you? Yeah, she's, she really saves it, but I like her. I like lots of ladies, and it's always uh, nice to play them. But Lisa is very quick, and I like that. Excellent. And what are your goals for your game, personally, down the road? My goals? Yeah. Just play and hope uh, I win some games. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I win the tournament, but you never know. It starts. Crazy. <laughs> Darts is crazy, really. It really is. Thank you so much. We'll let you go and good luck for yeah. tomorrow. Thank you. Once again, we are joined with Laura Turner. Laura, thank you again for your time. Yeah, you're more than welcome. <laughs> uh, since we last spoke, uh, which was at the lakeside, you and Aaron both played your first matches. Perhaps didn't go as it had hoped, but what was it like having that experience from both being on the hockey and off the hockey and invested? Yeah, I would say uh, off the hockey and watching your other half play is 10 times worse than playing yourself. Um, yeah, definitely uh, prefer the playing side of it, uh, I would say, but uh, yeah, it didn't quite go to plan, but uh, there's so much you can take from it. You know, it was my fifth televised appearance and okay, it wasn't, it wasn't groundbreaking, I had opportunities, but each time I think you learn something new when you're up there, so hopefully I can do a bit better here this weekend. <laughs> Absolutely, and we had some people wondering, do you and Aaron ever get a chance to play pairs at all? We have, we have. We, we remarkably don't, uh, we haven't won a huge amount together, but we did win the Isle of Man Open, pair, mixed pairs, but uh, yeah, the mixed pairs seem f- uh, kind of fewer and fewer apart, if you know what mm-hmm. I mean, like, with uh, mixed triples and mixed fours kind of being preferred. But yeah, whenever we can, we do tend to pair up together. <laughs> and obviously, uh, both of your daughters also play, it's a whole family affair. Uh, just take a quick moment to brag about some of their recent accomplishments as well. Yeah, no, they're both doing brilliant. They both play for Surrey Youth. Um, they're both in the under-21s. Neve actually most recently lost in the final of the Southern Youth Counties triples. Uh, quite impressed, actually. She took out 66 to level the match and gave it a real big one. She's kind of like a mini maybe girl in price in the making. <laughs> oh, goodness. And then away from the lakeside and family issues with the women's series, you managed to make two finals in the same day on one of the weekends. What is that experience like compared and do you just take a ton of confidence after doing that? Yeah, of course, of course. I mean, actually, one of the biggest things, you know, it's actually quite exhausting. I think I've managed to play every single possible game that I could have played on that particular day. So, um, obviously, that is the goal. Um, but, yeah, taking that, when, when you then take it into day two, you think, wow, you actually do feel quite drained. So, it does show, you know, that, that that's that physicality that needs to build up if you're going to consistently kind of do that, get the stamina up. And um, But, yeah, in terms of confidence, I think there's, you know, what better confidence boost, apart from winning, I guess, which would have been the icing on the cake just to make it that far, considering I had such a disaster at the first set of uh, Women's Series this year, to actually put myself in a position and then maintain it in the last set of um, Women's Series, you know, that's, that's, that's really great. And now the PDC has announced that they're expanding the Women's Series to 24 events and another match play that's going to start the qualifications directly after this one finishes. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, flight's booked for Hildesheim. <laughs> um, I will be out there at the end of August, but it's brilliant. It just shows, you know, the, the continual investment that the PDC are making within the within the women's uh, side of the sport is it, fantastic. This is an amazing opportunity to play in this iconic venue, the Winter Gardens, and really then the, I guess I'm going to try and enjoy this moment. I've made it here this time around, and the hard work starts all over again from uh, from August. And as an uh, advocate, both from playing and from commentating with the women in this game, 
Uh, how nice has it been to not only see that the women's series has brought women from various countries, but also women of various ages? Yeah, it's, it's brilliant. I mean, we've already we've always said it's such a diverse sport. You know, it's it's open to to anyone. Age is irrelevant, and you know, I think we've had people from Japan. Mercury's brought over some of her friends this year as well. Uh, we've had um, Mosgan Rahimi, if she's from um, Iran. So yeah, we've seen like people traveling from all over to to actually take this experience. Uh, Aurora Focasato, she fantastic young player from Italy so actually to see like you say the levels and already they I think they're up almost 50% on what they were the year before so if we can keep keep that up keep the numbers up I think it's just hopefully gonna get stronger and stronger uh, and you also do uh, obviously still your commentary for Sky and you did a bit of it here earlier in the week does that give you an upper hand having seen and witnessed the venue ahead of time are we seeking out those niches <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll find out on Sunday we'll find out tomorrow but uh, no it was great I mean I love the commentary side of things I love being able to talk about a sport that I just enjoy you know and so passionate about so having that opportunity to be here I've experienced the heat I will say that much it does get a tiny bit warm in here whenever it's all full up but uh, yeah just watching the walk on I think my first commentary this year was uh, Stephen Bunting playing and Stephen and I have the same walk on song so I have to say I did uh, my stomach churned slightly when I heard that and saw him walking on because it's uh, you know it's quite an it's quite an epic uh, kind of venue to do that in so yeah, looking forward to it, but uh, with, I don't know whether it really gives me an advantage because it's <laughs> just kind of what happens when I'm up there. <laughs> and that's kind of my next question is when you play in an iconic venue like the Winter Gardens, and it is obviously it's not the first televised event you've played in, but it's the first women's televised event for the PDC where they've covered the entire series as opposed to a one off match. Uh, with the kind of prestige of the Winter Gardens and the prestige of what the PDC are doing, does that create any level of extra anxiety with playing any extra levels of expectation or are you able to kind of shut that out and just focus on I'm trying to bring a game, it's another game just like last time was a game and it will go as it goes. Yeah, I think it will go as it goes is probably the best way to, to kind of sum it all up. But. Um yeah, I do. I, I have historically got very, very kind of tense and anxious as I've run into like like the World Championships at the Lakeside or at the O2, and that's something that I've just been working on. I'm trying not to overthink things because I, I'm terrible for doing that. So I feel much more relaxed coming into this one. I know it's a massive opportunity, and I want to make the most of it. But I think you know, trying to keep myself calm and you know just remind myself I, I can play. I've played well enough to get here. You only have to look at the players not in the top eight, not playing it this weekend to think, yeah, this is an achievement in itself. So hopefully. I can bring that game that saw me through to two finals. Um, if, if not, you know, I'll have to start the process again. But you know, I'm feeling confident, and most importantly for me, I'm trying to kind of keep myself quite cool, quite calm. Mm. Uh, you know, it, I'm, tr I'm trying to trick my own brain into thinking yeah, it's fine, it's just another match. Well, we know it's not, but uh, hopefully, the kind of that will work for me. <laughs> and how special is it just um, to be one of the people in the first field of eight to ever be? I mean, it's it's history making. There will never be another first eight women to qualify for this tournament no and I'm, I'm super proud of everyone that you know not just the eight that qualified but everyone else that obviously kind of came along supported the women's series i think everyone kind of identified the importance the pdc were doing it for us and you know we we, we, we tried to attend and you know make sure those numbers were up for them as well so um yeah no it's 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 brilliant um yeah but to, to be in the top Eight, to be one of the first is just a, a fantastic feeling. I think a lot of us have hoped for something like this for quite a long time, so to actually be part of it is just that, you know, that extra cherry on top of the cake. <laughs> and as a commentator, obviously, they'll ask you to make predictions about things. In a weird turn of events, considering you're obviously not commentating all of this, obviously you have your hopes, but outside of maybe your portion of the draw, do you have any expectations of how the other portions of the draw might go? I, I honestly, I genuinely don't. I mean, I hope everyone just brings their A game and you know showcases what we can all do. But uh, you know, when you're up there, it's, it's isn't it, like I say, it's a new experience. I'm really keen to see how Kate Sheldon and Chloe O'Brien do. Obviously, you know, the two kind of up and coming like next generation mm -hmm. youngsters uh, who've done fantastic to get there, and they've got their hands full with Lisa of Ashton and. <laughs> And so, you know, it's it's kind of experience against this kind of young, energetic and, and fearless kind of talent coming through. So yeah, I think I'm intrigued to see how everyone gets on. But, uh, you know, I'm not making any predictions, <laughs> obviously, on this occasion. But you know, I'm interested to see that they're, they're quite interesting, like, line, uh, clashes. Yeah, it's quite uh, interesting, especially when we consider that the last person to knock out um, 
Fallon from the women's series, if I recall correctly, the last woman to knock her out was Katie. Yeah. So. Yeah, I know she's definitely beat her in the semi, didn't she, on a 1-2-2. Two, two. I think yeah. she, she hit the bullseye. So, uh, you know, she's, she's definitely more than capable of that. So, yeah, but like I say, I just think they're, in, they're intriguing games. And I think all of it was, I think a big part of it is just how we all hold up under the pressure, under the spotlight, just as much as, you know, the talent that we can, we can try and bring. And now we uh, talked about goals for the year before. Obviously, a big group of goals have already been achieved uh, with making it here. Uh, goals for other, you know, goals for the rest of the year now that there's the extended tournament. Goals for, you know, the WTF series. Yeah. Any, anything personal that stands out like, I want this? No, I think, you know, in terms of the PDC, you know, it's, it's, it's trying to keep the trying to keep my place perhaps within the top eight I, I said that before top eight finishes where I want I think I'm fifth at the moment so if I can kind of maintain that and then hopefully going into January then I might have an opportunity to do Q school you know it's just just again just another opportunity and you know, the door open uh, and with the WDF I have um, booked to go to Antwerp and Sweden in August so we'll be doing a few more tournaments on that to try and secure a place in, in the world championship um, I think I'm already in the world masters so just waiting for details to kind of come out on those two tournaments just to see what you know what the cutoff is and everything else so yeah still pursuing both sides of things but uh, you know to make to make a world championship there as well would be, would be awesome fantastic and I will let you go now but good luck for tomorrow and thank you so much as ever oh, yeah, thank you <laughs> Uh, we are joined right now with Katie Sheldon, the Irish Gold Cup winner most recently, uh, last weekend if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Congratulations on that. Thanks very much. Uh, since you last spoke with us, you were the uh, runner-up for the Irish Youth Classic and made the quarterfinals of the Irish Youth Open, both times being beaten by Luke Littler, who obviously we all know is ridiculously in form at the moment. Um, what was it like to play Luke on those venues and how special was it as an Irish player to make deep runs there? Yeah, of course, making deep runs, especially in Ireland, was massive. And uh, to be on the stage, obviously what Luke is doing at the minute is absolutely amazing. So fair dues to him. But um, yeah, I'm absolutely, I was absolutely delighted to really get to the final that weekend. And obviously with playing in the youth tournaments, there is more playing against the boys as the tour, you know, as the tours get older, you get more women's and more men's and more split from that. What is it like playing against the boys? Does that teach you anything about your game, the way that the boys play or how they choose to, you know, how they choose to go about their practice or their confidence? Does that rub off at all or do you have your own set? Yeah, to, to play against the boys for so long was really great um, because obviously the boys are, are very, very good. Obviously the girls are very good as well. But playing against lads week in, week out, I think spurred my game on. Obviously you had the likes of Keen Barry and Killian Heffernan over in Ireland, Dennis Levin as well. So playing against them at youth level really spurred my game on massively. And... Uh, also, with the Irish Gold Cup win, you had won it before in 2019 and then COVID happened. So you're a two-time back-to-back winner of that. How special is it to be the two-time winner of that event? Yeah, it's massive, especially coming into this weekend to have won the two events there last weekend. It's, it's a massive confidence booster and uh, obviously to be sat uh, the way I am in the rankings at the minute at home is massive as well. And then you also won the women's Six Nations with Team Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> What is it like to play for your country and to, you know, succeed so astoundingly with that as well? Yeah, I love playing for Ireland. It's a massive, massive opportunity. And to, on my debut, win it with obviously Robin Byrne and Caroline Breen. It was absolutely massive. Um, I was so, so delighted and obviously proud of the team. We were, we gelled so, so well. And to quali uh, to win, sorry, it was just so, so good. <laughs> And then also, um, as you start to move away from some of the youth and into more women's series, uh, we saw you play Paula Jacqueline in one of the women's series, not PDC women's series, but uh, was that the English Open, I think it was? Could have been the Irish, it could, could have been Killarney, I think maybe you're thinking of. Could have been, I'm very bad with dates. That's all right, I think it could have been Killarney, but uh, I think she bet me in Killarney. Um, but obviously moving away from youth level, obviously now that I'm 18, it's now just focusing on the women's game and see what I can do. Yep, and how are you finding that transition is uh, just kind of a... Uh, culture shock or is it reasonably seamless for you? Yeah, of course, qualifying, uh, of course... You know, playing now in the women's series uh, and all sorts, it's, uh, it's a massive change, obviously, just constantly playing against the women. But the women's level at the minute is, is so, so high and you have to adapt very quickly and uh, to obviously qualify in the top eight 
I'm absolutely delighted with how I've adapted, really. Yep. Obviously, the crowning achievement of your runs in the Women's Series has to be the 122 checkout <laughs> against Fallon, your highest checkout thus far. How does it just feel in the moment watching those darts go in? Yeah, I was absolutely delighted. didn't really know what to do. Um, obviously, beating someone like Fallon in those events is a massive, massive achievement. Um, and to get to the final in that one, but... Uh, you have to you have to play and you have to beat these players if you want to do well in these events and thankfully enough I ended up being able to do that so hopefully can do the same tomorrow. And you made one final in the women's series but also two semi-finals could have just as easily been three finals because you really pushed Lisa mm. to the brink in those. Uh, obviously Lisa and Fallon for the people at home that only turn it tune in are on a next level with their game but when you push somebody when you're 18 and you're pushing somebody who's at the top of their game Besides confidence, does that, you know, what does that bring to you specifically? Just is there tips, tricks, things that you realize I'm playing this way, I need to hold on to these pieces? Yeah, of course. Like obviously when you're pushing these top top players and you know you're you're that close to beating them, it just spurs you on really to, you know, get over the line and I think once you can beat these players once you kind of can beat them more times if that makes sense so to to push myself and and that's really it and obviously as I said I know other than confidence but it does give you a lot of confidence knowing you can push these top top players (laughs) and have you done anything special to prepare for the match play um, up, not now with it, the ordinary if I'm honest I think my practice routine at the minute has been very very good obviously I've been playing in events at home and all sorts but I think my practice routine and the way I go around things has been good enough before so it's, it's good now obviously putting the extra little bit more in just to make sure you're fully fully prepared for this weekend and in terms of the venue obviously different venues come with different expectations and different histories Winter Garden has a rich history does that feel more exciting or does that feel more like pressure in the moment? No, I don't think it's pressure and I think it's uh, it, it just brings excitement because knowing you're going to be up on that stage that all these legends have been on, I think that's just massive and you just have to take it all in one step at a time really. And obviously this will be the first ever fully televised PDC women's event that they've ever done. Has it sunk into you that at such a young age you can always say that you made history by being one of the first eight? Yeah, I, I think so. I think, uh, I think t- before when I qualified on the day I don't think I really took it all in but now being here seeing all the lights the cameras I'm, I'm just so so proud of myself for qualifying obviously being one of the first eight people in in this competition for the first time ever so to be finally a part of it it's massive yeah, and they've just announced that they're expanding the women's series to 24 and that the match play will go on again and it'll, qualifications will start directly from the next round of women's series um, thoughts on how that's going thoughts on how you want to participate, thoughts on what it means for the game in general. Yeah, I think for the ladies game it's massive and it needs to be supported obviously the, the PDC wouldn't have put it on again if it wasn't being supported by the ladies, so so it's all down to the ladies, that obviously if we all show up then we're going to get these events, so thankfully to Sky, we've, we've gotten these events and to have 24 of them now, that's massive, massive, massive. And do you have any goals? Uh, obviously when we usually talk, we talk about what are your goals for the year, but as time goes on you'll meet more and more goals so do you have any specific tournaments that you have your eyes set on or any just rankings that you want? I think over the next year I think a main goal is to win one of the women's series. I think the game is there to do it I just need to get over the line and get over and hopefully I can do that this Sure. Fantastic. Will you play Fallon tomorrow? And obviously, she should, based on how you played last time, she should be a little bit nervous. <laughs> Good luck and thank you so much for your time. Thanks so much, Hannah. Cheers. Right now, we are joined with Lorraine Lynn Stanley. Thank you so much, Lorraine, for your time. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, so, after we spoke last time, we talked about your role as the uh, develop, uh, youth development with Target and how that was going. Now that you've been in the role for a few months longer, uh, how, how have you found that still and have you found that it's able to influence how you're approaching the game at all? Oh, I absolutely love it. I love my job. <laughs> and there aren't many people that can say that. I'm really, really, I, I do do genuinely feel really lucky to have had the opportunity uh, to to be in this role you know so yes it does influence how I approach the game because it perhaps makes me think a little bit more because I'm watching uh, all the elite ones play and other uh, youngsters as well um, 
I sort of have to think, what would I be saying to them? I should be saying that to myself sometimes. I can be a bit hard on myself sometimes. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've, it makes me approach it a little bit different. Mm-hmm. And how exciting was it for you with having that role that Katie also qualified? I know, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And, of course, with having Chloe in the field as well, um, I was just saying before, we've got a real mixed bag, you know, so we've got some oldies, we've got some, some in the middle, and we've got some younger ones coming through and at the end of the day they are the future of the sport so it's brilliant that you know a quarter of the field (laughs) are under 20. (laughs) And uh, away from the women's series you've made the quarterfinals recently of the England Women's Open, the Welsh Women's Open and the Dutch Women's Open and then on the women's series you were the only woman to cash in on all of the series this year. With that consistency being remarkable what is the secret? What Does it feel like something has clicked? What's going on with well, that? Well, if I tell you, I'm going to have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the secret is. I think probably just, just finding that bit of consistency makes your confidence grow. And when you're confident, you're going to be more consistent. So uh, it's all about finding that form and, and running with it while it's there, you know, so and just keeping, keeping it going. And the PDC has expanded the women's series to 24 events, and they've already said that they're going to put on a match play again. Qualifications start from the next women's series, which is a couple of weeks' time, if yes, I remember correctly. Yes, August, yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on this development as we go into it? Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It, it's that knowing exactly what's coming up, what we're playing for at the end of it, knowing, you know, knowing that prize at the end of all the hard work. Um, and it's, it's what we've always wanted as, as players. You, you want to know what you're playing for, when you're going to be playing. Uh, and, of course, the prize money is pretty good as well. So mm-hmm. um, what's not to love about it? And also, obviously, the WDF, in response, has raised their prize money for the championship as well. Not most recently, the, most, the one that's just gone past. Of course, yeah. When we first talked in 2019 about where's the women's game going, because the BDO appears to be going under, you know, could... Could we have ever foreseen this? And is this, when we said, what is, the sky's the limit, go dream big, is this even remotely in in the realm of what your dreams were at the time? Oh, of course it is. Of course <laughs> it is. And, and the thing is, we've got choices. Um, you know, so you, sometimes you can't do it all. We'll try and do as much as we can while we've got the energy and the money, of course, because, you know, especially at the moment, travel and everything isn't cheap. Um, but yeah, you've got to give it. You've got to give it your best shot, haven't you? Um, because opportunities opportunities have been given, and you don't know whether they're going to be there set in stone for the for the duration, do you? You know. So um, I think it it all needs supporting as best as it possibly can. And then, obviously, on the last weekend of the women's series, you won your first title of the series. What does that do? especially to your confidence, knowing that that's the last one before this event. Oh, yeah, that was pretty special, I must admit. Um, and having been in six or seven semi-finals previous, um, it, it proved to me I could I could cross the line <laughs> and get there. Um, and, of course, it fills you with confidence. And, yeah, perfect timing for it to be the last, the last weekend. And, obviously, you have gotten over the line throughout your career several times <laughs> crawled sometimes but hey ho <laughs> but uh, yeah just that specific as close to this just that extra boost yes of course yeah it mm-hmm. just gives you that extra bit of confidence and and that's what we all need sometimes mm-hmm. and then obviously this will be your first taste of a PDC televised event um do you have any expectations on how that'll differ from another uh, televised event like the Lakeside? Obviously, we still have the same concept of TV, same concept of historic venue. Do you have any expectations on how that might differ? Um, well, you know, we know it's all going to be so professional and um, so hot. <laughs> I'm already experiencing stood here. Um, and it, it's just, it's a, diff- it's a different, you know, you can't compare. Um, so... No, I haven't got any expectations because you take it for what it is, don't you? <laughs> and what's your practice been like trying to lead up to this? Um, yeah, pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> good days and bad days, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, more child abuse, you've been b- battering Josie like you did in the women's series. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, she doesn't live at home now, so uh, so no, we can't practice together. Oh, she should make some trips. <laughs> <laughs> she does when she can. 
<laughs> she'd be saying mum should make some trips <laughs> and um beyond expectations is there any extra pressure with this do you feel any extra pressure or is it more just trying to get that mindset of each game is is a game and if it wins we go on to the next game which is well, a game. of course I, I always look at one game at a time you never never look ahead um because you've got to get beyond the game you're about to play or you're playing, you know, you could, and when you let your thoughts run ahead, then you lose your focus. So, yeah, it's one game at a time, step by step, yeah. tournament by tournament. Your first match is against Rian Griffiths. Any expectations, I would say, or hopes, but I think we all know what you hope happens. <laughs> Any expectations on what might happen there? Rian is not going to be a pushover at all. He's a class player, been playing quite a while. Uh, loads of experience and she shows um, lots of grit and determination so um, so yeah I could have a game on my hands there and finally uh, with this you know iconic venue and the first fully televised PDC women's event ever has it sunk in that your place in history will be however long this event goes as one of the people that were in the first eight for this no I'm trying to not think about that because that would just make me nervous <laughs> well it doesn't matter if you go out first round you well, won't no, want still, to but well, you're I'm still, still going to be, be one of the first yeah absolutely. you'll always be the first yeah so it's brilliant though it is just so brilliant <laughs> I'm really looking forward to being part of it I'm looking forward to seeing it good luck for tomorrow thank, thank you, you. Right now, I'm joined by Chloe O'Brien, who is in the top eight this week, and everybody's excited because she's a bit unknown compared to some <laughs> of the other players in here. Chloe, thanks so much for your time. I was happy to help. What got you started in darts? My uncle Alan, actually, he had a pub of his own uh, back where I'm from, and got my first start of darts for my birthday, so that's kind of really where I, I, I started off and <laughs> started to fly. And when you got started in darts, did you watch any darts at all? Was no, I didn't even know darts was a sport before I got handed these pointy things that I threw on a board. <laughs> um, I didn't have any recognition and after I got the darts, then I started to research and, and started watching some of them. And Also my mum and that have been quite big dart fans ever since I was born, so I kind of just all connected, connected <laughs> in my mind. And uh, I've noticed that you've been picked for the Scotland ladies for the Europe Cup. The Europe Cup. So yeah. I, I, this is my first uh, adult Scotland cap, well, my second because I played for the internationals. Um, so this will be my first European with the adults um, and like my 12th cap for Scotland <laughs> overall. And are you looking forward to representing your country and the experience of that as an adult? Yes, I can't wait to be in Spain in the hot and sun in my full uniform to play darts. <laughs> can't wait for it. <laughs> And while you've played the girls' tournaments, you've had mm. super deep runs like the semi-finals of the 2020 Dutch Open. Uh, is it kind of daunting now to start moving from the girls' game into the women's game? It was, yes. But obviously, because where I'm from, we don't really have many youth girl players. So There's always been playing against the adults. And I think that's kind of helped me transition f f from a young female up to, obviously, an adult. Mm. So it, it is quite daunting at times, but it's... It's not as daunting as it would be if I didn't play the ladies. And you've done very well against the season pros in the ladies game overall. In 2021, with the Women's Open, uh, England's Women's Open, I should clarify, you made the last 32 um, before running into Dita Hedman, who was in absurd form at that time. Oh, she was in phenomenal form. <laughs> and then 2021, you were in the uh, Welsh Women's Open, you made the top 32 before going out to Natalie Gilbert, who, as we've seen in the Women's Series, is coming on to her own bout of form as well. Uh, are you able to learn from games like that, where you're playing people that have played longer and have more experience, or is the focus solely on trying to get the job done in the moment? No, not really. I'm trying to learn as I go, because obviously I played uh, Jo Rules back when she was playing uh, last year. She gave me a really good f a few tips and I've acted on them, and this is where I've come from, obviously, acting on it, like advice from the topper players, mm. like even Lisa Ashton and all that, and they've all came and said, like, Chloe, how do you feel? It's hard the next thing. And I was like, well, I feel quite confident. So like, do this, do that. And I'm thinking, no, not really, but I've, I've worked on everything like that. So I've worked on my nerves, I've worked on my balance on the board, I've worked on my arm, keeping my arm strengthened up and not hurting halfway through the game. Um, but um, no, I just try and learn every opportunity I can. 
And you were also a subject of a BBC documentary that had about uh, darts in Scotland. I was, <laughs> yes. Um, what was that experience like for you? It was great. Um, it was my second, but uh, uh, first shown a uh, documentary on on BBC. It was a great experience. I didn't know um, what what I would do during it or after it. I didn't know how I would react to it. Um, but it was really, really good, and I really surprised myself at how good I talked in this sort of the next time watching it over again. But the amount of support I've got. I, I've gotten from that has been absolutely amazing and I can't thank everyone else enough to being up there saying, oh, well done Chloe, you'll do great, good luck, well done. All oh, this is such amazing, it's great to have that feeling. <laughs> and how did you decide to try your hand at the PDC Women's Series? Well, if you don't try, you don't, you don't really know at the end of the day, so I kind of went out and I was like, Mum, I want to try that, are you able to take me there? I'll pay for it, it's on the next time, because I was working. Um, I was like, Come on, we, we can do it once. We don't like it, we don't like it, we don't have to do it anymore. So we went down, and no one could be nicer. And obviously, a few of my Scottish uh, mates that played in the team when we came down with us, and obviously practiced it on the next and had a great laugh, and it just made it so much more enjoyable. And from that point on, I've got such a good relationship with all the other players, all the other females down there, that I was like, you know what, I like it here, so I want to keep coming and coming and coming, and look where it's gotten me. I cannot be prouder of myself. And how does that differ from other events? Obviously, this is the first two years that the PDC has put this on. How how does the vibe feel compared to, say, a WDF event? I think this is a lot more professional. It's a lot more professionally run. It's a lot more smoother, a lot more faster. Um, with the WDF, you're waiting for hours for getting a game to be finished up and then you can just be another game thrown on. But the PD officials in the PDC events, they're snapping quickly. They like uh, structure. They like quickness and all that and I'm thinking perfect and that way you're not hanging about for hours and this at this point you're up uh, you're up playing your game you're back down you're up playing your game you're back down and sometimes that could be really daunting on the arm but sometimes it's really good to keep that pace up and keep the arm going mm-hmm. and coming on to the match play you got the last spot in the field on the last day what was that day like and did you realize right away that you had made it across or no did you find it? I never um, when I woke up this morning, uh, uh, that morning, I was sitting 12th, and at that point in time, I was like, you know what, I'm not going to make it. I'm just going to enjoy myself now, enjoy it, just play for you. Wh- wherever you go, you go, and if you get money, you get money. And then I was, the last event, I was sitting 10th. So that was like, okay, I'm still no any factor in, I'm still about 250 behind. I'm not really caring, just play for yourself. And I played my last... I think it was my last 32 game or my last 16 game against uh, Julie Finlay, I think it was. And I came off and mum was like, you've qualified. But I didn't hear that in my mind. I heard, I didn't hear (laughs) words come out of her mouth. So I was like, right, whatever mum, I'm going to go play now. Because I was on the stream board against Lisa. So I was like, whatever. Went on, got beat 4-0. I wasn't really caring. Came off and Charlie, one of the PDFF, uh, PDC officials were like, Chloe, uh, this guy wants to talk to you upstairs. And I was like, what? <laughs> uh, excuse me, why? You've qualified, Chloe. And I swore on his face. Now, I, I, I apologised straight after it. I was like, Charlie, come on now. Don't be joking me right now. It's like, Chloe, you're not joking. Go up those stairs right now. And I was like, oh my God, I've qualified. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, a surreal experience. Like, from going in the morning, from such being so down and just saying, you know what? It's a weekend, make a weekend of it, um, to go in, oh my god, I've qualified for the match play. <laughs> it's just so surreal at the moment. And you'll be playing on TV for the first ever fully P- for fully televised PDC event for women. Um, has it sunk in that at your young age that you will always be one of the first eight to have ever played in this event? No, <laughs> no. No, the answer to that is no. <laughs> it's not sunk in yet. Yeah, I think it has because I'm getting... I'm, I'm starting to get, like, <laughs> a, a, what's the word for it? Adrenaline. Yeah. It's starting to pump it in my blood now. Um, but no, it's not sunk in that I'm going to be playing in, in front of all those people. It's it's just so surreal. I don't think it's ever going to sink in ever, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously you're up against Lisa first, which most people have said with her form she's probably going to win the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Does that give you a bout of freedom that the expectations don't rest on your shoulders and you can play your game or is it detrimental to think about in some way? Well it's it's a bit in between obviously Lisa's a great person, a great player, she's always been on great form, even though she had a bad day she'll still power on through it. 
Um, but apart from that, no, because she needs to beat me. <laughs> I don't need to beat her. Um, all I want to beat her, I'll give her a good enough game mm-hmm. to make think, oh my god, I need to, I need to work at this now. But I'm like, there's no pressure to win or to lose. I'm just going out there, enjoying myself, enjoying the scenery, and taking it all in, and just play my game. If I can't play my game, then I shouldn't be up there, to be honest with you, but that's where it goes. And what do you uh, have in terms of future goals for the darts, or future goals just in general? I mean, world's <laughs> wide open at this age. <laughs> um, there's a lot of more doors open now than I ever thought was possible. Um, right now, I'm just here to enjoy myself, take it all in, and just keep working hard at it. All I want to do it now is just keep my head down and play darts. That's what I want to do. I don't want to be a cocky one, I don't want to be uh, whatever. I want to actually work hard for it, I want to put time and love into it. The love I have for the game is unbelievable and this weekend's only going to make it stronger. Um, and I just want to keep playing, I want to get my name out there, I just want to have more of the support I've got now and just keep going up the ranks and keep doing it because if next year there's all those events going on again, happy days, great, it's more practice, it's more this, it's more screen time. Perfect. But I just want to widen the Dutch community up. I just want to support everyone and just have a good game at it. It's not about the money, it's not about the time you'll get for it. It's just the feeling you have when you're on the stage when you're playing the dart when that a dart releases your hand. That's all I'm I'm I'm, I'm thinking about at the moment. Fantastic. Well thank you so much for your time. Good luck tomorrow and good luck with the Europe Cup. Thank you very much. Cheers. Um how did I start with the BBC? Uh, well I just thought, give it a go. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, the prize money was good. And the opportunities with the PDC, you can't say no, to be fair. <laughs> you just can't. <laughs> and how do you choose right now to prioritise your darts? Obviously, there's a lot on the PDCs. Expanding to 24 events, the WDF has picked up the reins from the BDO and the women's game. Mm-hmm. And you've got county games, you've got national games. There's just a lot of darts on at all times. How yeah. do you prioritise that? Oh, there's a lot. Um, I mean, at the moment, I'm I'm just doing Super League. Well, I did County last year and the PVC, but now I've got a sponsor. I'm hoping to do a bit more. I'm fair play to work. My manager in work, he said, whatever you need, you can have off. So I've been very lucky. He loves his stars too. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Within the women's series, you had two semi-finals and a final. Mm-hmm. Uh, did those semi-finals finals feel any different from the ones before? So, some people have said the layout seems different and it feels different because it's PDC. Yeah, it's, I mean, well, you know, for example, the video to- tournaments when they were, it was crowded, if you know what I mean. The mm-hmm. boards were very close, but with the PDC, it's, you've got a, a gap and it just feels, it feels better, and it's, you know, it's professionally run, it's, it's good. I like it. Mm-hmm. And then, did your performance surprise you at all? Obviously, you've got a strong oh, game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I haven't, during Covid, I didn't pick up a dart, to be honest, mm-hmm. and, well, I mean, I might have played on a Wednesday night, but other than that, and then I got there, and I was really nervous, and I made it, well, I think it was the first round, I made it the final against Lisa, I thought, what am I doing? <laughs> I mean, and I just thought, maybe I've still got it, so keep going. Yeah, and I was going to say, when people think about a Welsh Rian making it to the top eight, mm. you know, after, after Covid running a little bit low, and obviously the lakeside being pushed to April, so it's more mm. fresh in the mind, and some people might have thought... It this was is Rian. <laughs> yeah, the one. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be hers to go. And obviously the field is much different with how many people have opted to come in as well. So new challenges with new players? Yeah, um, I mean, some of the players that I played on the PDC, I've never played before, which I think maybe is a good thing because I don't know them, they don't know me, and it's an even playing field. But I mean, I'm just hoping that more women do the PDC and then we can just carry on and keep it going and just mm-hmm. go from strength to strength. Mm-hmm. And how special is it for you to be in the first ever field of the first ever PDC women's match play? Oh, it's huge. I mean, I'm gobsmacked myself. <laughs> I never thought, because I mean, like I said, I never, I didn't practice over it, and I just went. And I, to make it into well, in the top twenty, I'd have been chuffed. But to make it in the top eight and finish six, it's like happy days. <laughs> you know, I was really chuffed. And have you prepared for your games tomorrow? Any changes or just steady the course with how it's going? 
<laughs> no, no change. I've practiced. I have practiced. I took a week off before. And I've been practicing for the, well since I qualified. I've been practicing, so hopefully it'll show up there. Hopefully it won't be too nervous. <laughs> And does the fact that it is um, such a big first thing, you know, event bring extra nerves to it, or are you able to kind of parcel that away? As in in the end, it is a dark game followed by another dark game if it goes your way, followed by another dark game. I'm hoping that it'll just be in my head. It'll just be another dark game, and then followed by another dark game. But I mean, as soon as I walk out that stage, it's an iconic building. I think yeah, my nerves might be a bit. <laughs> a bit much, but hopefully I can just turn that into adrenaline and go up there and strut my stuff. <laughs> and do you have any goals for the rest of the year, considering maybe this question would have been slightly answered differently a few months ago? Yeah, it would have been. <laughs> and now, yeah, well, I'm in the pipeline of, you know, getting a sponsorship, so hopefully they will. I'll be able to do a lot more. Ben. And I need to, well, because they're going to do more <laughs> uh, tournaments for the women, isn't it? Yep. So I need to keep... My, well, I need to keep in the top eight, so hopefully I will. Fantastic. Well, we'll let you go. So because it's later in the evening here. Thank you yeah. so much for your time again. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. And Thank good you. luck tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, so right now I'm joined with uh, Polly James, the Sky Sports presenter. Thank you so much for your time, Polly. Pleasure. Uh, so normally you're a radio DJ for Radio X. So how did you get into sports presenting and broadcasting? So here's the thing. When you are a radio DJ and when you are from Wales, because there's, I, I don't like to say it, but there's not, there's not many uh, of us female presenters in Wales. So when you do presenting on the radio, it's uh, people think that you've got transferable skills where you can do reporting and you can host Q&As and you can do all this other bits and bobs, which, which is what I've actually been able to do over the last 10 years. So basically I've um, you know, I was on I was on Capital Breakfast, so a bit of a heritage station back home, and and then all these events pop up, and you're asked to host them, and then sports stars come to Cardiff, and then you're asked to host them, and I just really enjoyed the, I, I love my sports, and I always have, um, and you know, in terms of Welsh darts, I suppose that's been growing over the last sort of like six seven years, and I've always liked that anyway, but um, yeah, it it it. It was kind of by accident, I guess, and, and now I found myself sort of mixing business and pleasure with sort of working. I started working for Unibet, doing uh, the post-match reaction interviews, and then Sky called me last year, which was like, oh my god, what the hell? Yes, I'll do it, you know. Um, so it's like that, really. I think you know when you're a radio DJ, I think people people think that you can can do everything else in terms of hosting and presenting. So tried my hand at it and uh, and that was it <laughs> and for the people that are listening that aren't familiar what is your background with just sports in general outside of broadcast so yeah I used to I used to be a right little sporty thing back in the day I mean back before I was 18 which was well, like 18 years ago <laughs> so um no I used to do athletics I was really into it and I love my sports and I'm fiercely competitive even now, you know, with my other half and all my friends and things. But no, I always like to keep fit. Obviously, you know, I'm a mum now, I'm pregnant. I, I don't get a lot of time to go to the gym and stuff. But yeah, in t and, I, and I think that's, you know, being, I wasn't semi-pro or anything, but I competed for Wales and, and GB juniors and stuff. So, you know, you sort of, you you get the dedication that goes into being a sports person and their, and their mindset. Obviously, I was only very young, but um, I love being around in the sports world. I, I love, I think that's what makes the world go round is, is sports and competitions, you know. And what is your specific background with the darts? Was it something that your family enjoyed watching or did you come onto it on your own? So, back in the day, we would always watch the world so that would always be sort of Christmas time we'd always watch it with the family and I think that's I don't know I guess that's kind of like the most families I guess you know you'd sit around Christmas time and watch the darts but and then you sort I sort of get teenager and then I just I can't really remember watching any of it then and then I, when I got with my other half now when I was about 18 years old he was really into his darts and I was working in London at the time and he was like, let's go to Ali Pali, which was, hang on, when was that? When did we actually go to Ali Pali? We actually went maybe five years later, probably. So like 2000 and, 2010 to 2011, that was my first Ali Pali. And then you just get struck by the darts bug, don't you? So, and, and that was it. And then that's when, you know, because I guess like when you're on the radio and stuff or when you are working in like 
broadcasting or media, there's, I, I can't say that you're restricted in what you say, but to a certain extent you are. But darts was really like my outlet. It was like my hobby that I loved to watch. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, I started, you know, I loved it. I was a bit of, I was a bit gobby on, on social media. I started talking, you know, just being a proper darts fan. And I loved it. And I loved being a punter. And we went to, I don't think there's, maybe there's a three, since I've been, since that first time to Ali Pali in the last, like, what, 12 years, I think I've missed, like, maybe three years or so. I just love it. It's just, a, you know, a staple of our Christmas tradition. <laughs> and will you be carrying on that tr- Christmas tradition with your kids? Oh, yeah, definitely, 100%. Well, I've got Indy up here now. Indy's my little girl. She's, like, two and a half years old because I am three weeks away from popping with my second now. So I brought my other half up and and her, my little girl, and they came into Winter Garden, so... I was like, oh, this is this feels really special. Like she can look back at this, and I'm taking a photo of her by the Oki. So, yeah, that's lovely. I think she I, she doesn't have a choice. In fact, it goes to show, you know, like with the women's game, for example, if you if you give women a representative or you know visualization, you know, like they're watching at home and they say women on telly. Well, my daughter sees me and Lake just having a check. Like we're not professional players or anything. But her favourite thing to do is darts, mummy, darts. And we've got, you know, a little spider, a little foam spider darts ball, which she loves. So, yeah, <laughs> she loves darts. <laughs> What's been the most memorable sporting event that you've covered thus far? Oh, gosh. Um, so, covered in terms of working, in the darts, it's obviously got to be the Worlds. Because, as I say, that was like... You know, the first tournament that I went to is the one that I always go to. My birthday's on the 27th, so we always go on the 27th of December, which is usually, you know, sort of like uh, the business end of the tournament. Um, But that, and I would say, what else have we done? Just being on air. I I do a lot of Q&As. So back in Cardiff, you know, like when like Tyson Fury, for example, I've interviewed him quite a lot when he comes on his tour to Cardiff and they're just carnage like I Tyson Fury is like my favorite sporting personality ever and then you've got AJ who's come along so I've been really lucky because all these huge sports stars they'll do you know all the big cities in England and they will come to Cardiff and then because as I said before there's not many female presenters um I'll always get that opportunity which is awesome so yeah and have you been finding the match play thus far this year so so good do you know what everyone said to me this is the first time I've been up to Winter Gardens for for the match play. Everyone has said to me, like, if you've enjoyed it, you know, watching it at home as a punter on your sofa, like, it's ten times better when you're here just because of the venue and because of the darts fans. Like, so many people were like, it's the holy grail of darts fans. Like, the fans here, there is a stark contrast to the ones you get at Ali Pali. You know, it's obviously it's like such a big party atmosphere. It's Christmas time, isn't it, and stuff. But... Yeah, here you can just tell that they are super darts fans. And, and I look like the whole town, like, turns into, like, you know, darts village, like, for one week. And there's, and it makes, it doesn't make me laugh, but you've got, like, all the, all the golden oldies, I'll call them. They'll hate me for saying this, but, you know, like, uh, Webby, who's not a golden oldie, but, you know, Mark Webster. And then you've got Colin Lloyd and um, you've got Chris Mason, for example. They've got, they've got, like, their hosting parties at, like, the local nightclub. Like, I love that. It's just, (laughs) it's brilliant. So I just love the whole... The, that the whole city just comes alive and it just turns into a darts town for like a week. <laughs> and have you been able to catch any of the women's series at all? And if you have, any predictions on the match play tomorrow? Oh gosh, well, do you know what? I was just talking to Rian and, you know, she's a Welsh. This is the thing, right, working in darts now is trying to not be biased, but it's still so hard because <laughs> my thing is I never want to lose sight of what it's like to be a darts fan, you know, because... I think that's what keeps you in touch with the fans and stuff, especially being a reporter, you know, and you never want to lose sight of what it's like to pay money to watch sports because this is what the punters are doing. Like, do you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, it's hard for me to remain not biased. But I, I, I mean, of course, I would. Can you just imagine like a Welsh double tomorrow night? I mean, <laughs> this is this is Saturday now. So the women's are, are on tomorrow and then the final. But I'd love Rian to do well. But I think Lisa it would just be the icing on the cake for her to win this this maiden women's match play. She deserves it. She's groundbreaking, you know. She's she's classic, she's iconic, and I think she deserves to have her name on the trophy, which we've just seen out there. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And what's your dream sports presenting job now that you've given been given these different opportunities? Gosh, I, 
like honestly I know it just sounds really like cliche but what I'm doing now I always used to obviously watch the darts on Sky and I always used to think oh my god I'd love to do that reporting role I'd love to interview the players afterwards because that's kind of like what I did before you know that's how I'd ask the questions and there's nothing like getting a player off stage raw as hell you know still pumped up with adrenaline and just having a chat with them you know I I find that brilliant so you know as I say not to sound too cliche like oh I'm doing my dream job already but I love it I I honestly I really love it and um I, you know I guess like the next route for me would be presenting it but I just, I just like doing the reporting. I really do. I like doing the interviewing and I like being that person who, I mean, it's what a privilege to, to have that position to speak to them as soon as they've won. But I love do, I love doing that. So, and also like what Emma does and any of the other presenters, like, you know, say like Laura Woods or Dave Clark used to do. I mean, it's just like, they, they are just phenomenal at what they do. I could never see myself doing that, <laughs> doing the job justice anyway. With a bit of bias, is there any specific player that you really enjoy watching? And if so, mm. what? <laughs> uh, I love big characters as well. I was just saying about Tyson Fury. Um, I love big, yeah, big characters, big personalities. That's That's what sports to me is about do you know what I mean as I say you know like I'm a fan first and foremost and without these you know big personalities I just think it would be boring so yeah Gezi's great I think he's toned it down a little bit but sometimes you just can't help like giving it some on stage can he uh Dimmy as well I know loads of people call him cringe don't they and I'm like oh bless him but you can just tell like he's he's not turning it on for the cameras he's not doing it for any he is genuinely so full of joy he's so pumped up um love dimmy love yeah uh, mvg still you know he was like the first you know when you know back those 12 years ago like he was just coming onto the scene just breaking through and uh, he's always been you know, being one of my favourites as well. I'm just trying to think who else. Yeah, but th- I'd say those those three, definitely, at the moment, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we can let you go and get ready for uh, being on air. Just one last question. Yeah, you, sure. You kind of hinted at it, I think. But okay. Commit. Who's going to be victorious at the end of the match play tomorrow, the men's? <sighs> Gosh, I think, I mean, I would love it. And this is from someone who, like, a, a media point of view or someone who works in media, you would love to see, like, Gezi and Michael Van Gerwen on stage together, taking chunks out of each other. (laughs) Um, But I don't know. God, I mean, like, Gezi's getting better. Michael Van Gerwen's getting... Michael just seems a little bit more pumped up, I think, at the moment, especially when you, like, speak to them. feels a lot more like, oh, yeah, you know. But, um... I don't know. Get I. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It's the is the million dollar question. Um, I'm gonna. Someone said to me, never bet against Michael Van Gerwen. You should never bet against Michael Van Gerwen, even a Michael Van Gerwen at ninety percent. And I'm not saying he is at ninety percent. I think he can. I, can I tell you after the semi-finals? <laughs> is that all right? <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say the final will be. MVG and Gezi but then but it is so wide open even at this stage even in the last four you're like actually Danny Noppet could do yeah. it's such a such a long game isn't it as well you know so and then Dimmy like I mean he could just come out of nowhere as well so I mean yeah it'll be exciting is the most important thing so true <laughs> <laughs> fantastic thank you so much for your time pleasure <laughs> Uh, right now we're being joined by Abigail Davies from TalkSport to you. Abby, thank you for your time. Thank you very much for having me. Big fan of the show. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for that. I told Alex and Burton and they, was, they were chuffed a bit, as it were. Uh, just so our listeners are aware, what is your background with just sports of all types, both on air, off air? Yeah, so I did a sports journalism degree and then went on to do a master's in sports broadcasting. Got into football reporting uh, quite early on. Football is something that has been incredibly significant in my life. It actually saved me and you know in terms of mental health battles and things like that football was the thing that that really got me through those tough times and really gave me a positive outlook and something positive to to focus on so football has been an ever present in my life as has darts in many ways so yeah the, there was really no other career path that I wanted to go down so started reporting on football worked my way up 
um, to being a reporter on Soccer Saturday after many, many years of making teas and coffees for Jeff Stellan. <laughs> Finally got to, to be the person he threw to at games and then I was very, very fortunate to get a job with TalkSport covering the darts and now I'm, I'm in another privileged position where I get to, to start commentating on the women's series as well. And did you have a background with darts just as a fan or a viewer before then? Absolutely. I am someone who doesn't work within a sport unless I'm a fan of it. I firmly believe that you need to know a sport inside out and especially with darts I feel like that passion that everyone has for it unless you feel that yourself it will come across and you will stick out like a sore thumb so you do need to have been in that environment I was the one who was down in a pint when there's a nine darter I've been there I've done that um yeah and it's actually the Winter Gardens was one of the first events I came to as a fan, so to now not be taking the fan entrance feels surreal, but it is a massive privilege. I am, of course, a massive fan of the Euro Tour and the Pro Tour because darts is life. <laughs> and how do you prepare for doing commentary for something like, say, the Women's Series? This is the key word, preparation. I ensure that I speak to the players ahead of it to to know things. For example, Aileen de Graaf, we've spoken to her ahead of the, the women's match play. You find out she had COVID last week. You find out these extra things. And, and just to add that colour for people, you know, we can, to a degree, we can all see what happens on the dartboard. It's adding context to these things as well as telling them the finishes. And, and of course, if you're commentating on a Johnny Clayton match, why he shouldn't have gone the route that he did but um, yeah it's of course about adding colour and context so prep is very very important look at their past results look at their averages look how they're improving and developing but also get to know these players get to know things about them and that's how you can add that or hopefully start to tell the story and what's the most memorable sporting event that you can remember covering doesn't have to be darts covering it's quite a simple one so I am a massive Swansea City fan and last season I got sent to the Cardiff City Stadium for the South Wales Derby and we knew that a win would ensure we became the first team to complete the league double in that fixture we won 4-0 and I did get told after the match that my smile just got broader and broader as I was comment or as I was reporting and every time they threw to me so that's one that will always stand out for me especially as Swansea City have played such a big role in my life when I was at my at my lowest point it was Swansea City going to watch those kind of gave me that purpose in terms of darts of course being at the Ali Pali when Fallon Sherrick won her first match and seeing firsthand the landscape of women's darts changing and developing but also I think being at the women's series was something that I will forever be proud of because seeing the likes of Katie Sheldon come through and seeing the way that the gap between Lisa and Fallon and the rest of the field is being bridged, we are seeing something incredibly special in the world of women's starts. And to, to now be immersed in that and be a part of that, it does feel incredibly special. And of course, the PDC did have for that event a majority female production crew, which I think is incredible testimony to the, to the work that the PDC do. And uh, from that standpoint, uh, do you have any predictions for tomorrow with the Women's Series? We are going to try to stuff this out tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I think in terms of predictions, it's very interesting. The fallon Sherrick katie Sheldon match is the one that really stands out to me. I think Katie Sheldon, I am... I hate the term, but I am a fangirl. I am such an incredible, in, just so enthusiastic about everything that she is doing, the way she speaks, she's the full package. And I think if she can hold it together up there, we've already seen her beat Fallon Sherrick, of course, it was on the floor, and we don't know. We talk about players who are big stage players. Until they've actually played there, we don't know what they're going to be like on that big stage. And that's something we can certainly say about Katie Sheldon, but... I am so excited to see her on the big stage. I think if she plays her normal game, we've seen her become, already this year, she's become the third female on the Women's Series to average in excess of 95. That was absolutely phenomenal, that performance over Donna Gleed. And I just think she can push Fallon all the way. We saw her beat her on the Women's Series, a 1-2-2 on the ball in a deciding leg to, to make it to the final. And I just think that girl is something incredibly special.
Yeah, and I think as we see more of those high averages, it kind of pushes other people in the high averages. We obviously talk a lot with Kirsty Hutchinson, and she threw a 90 average versus Lisa, Lisa stomped her, but she didn't know she had a 90 average in her game, so something to witness and experience there. Yeah, absolutely, and I think that's something we see, you know, across the board in this game, isn't it? When when you do get beaten like that, a lot of players just think, oh, I've p I performed badly, but you look at it, and you look at it all in the context of things as well, and a lot of players have said, they struggle in the women's game when they're put on a streaming board because you don't realise the pressure they feel now that people can see their averages on a consistent basis. These are things that, because you have the fragile masculinity crew, as I like to call them, you know, who are going to try and pick up on these things, the women still think about them possibly too much but the more they start proving things with their darts the less they're going to start worrying about that and the more we start seeing them getting this exposure both on the streaming board and, and knowing that this tournament the women's match play is going to be returning in 2023 that's so crucial because I spoke to Lorraine Wynn Stanley earlier and she was saying you know it's just so important to know that this isn't just a one-off and we have something to keep pushing for and building in the women's game. Yep. And how are you finding the match play thus far with the men's? It has been one of the greatest tournaments that I have ever been involved with. I think the two days of quarterfinal action, you know, you are rarely going to see that quality on the Winter Garden stage. And it, it's been phenomenal. Um, I think, of course, we knew it was going to be one of the most wide open match play tournaments in history. I think Jose de Souza, the form that he seemed to find from nowhere, he didn't even know where those performances were going to come from. We've seen a number of upsets. We've seen, you know, some players coming back into form. Gedwin Price, it's been fantastic to see him pushed in his matches and finding the answers, which is something I wasn't sure whether he was ready to do. But Dimitri Vandenberg, for me, is the one who's been the most consistent. His finishing has been absolutely phenomenal. And before we move on, I do realise that I kind of got out of giving you an answer by mentioning how much I love Katie Sheldon. I'm going for Lorraine Wynn Stanley. Okay, Lorraine Wynn Stanley, and then let's go with the men. Who do you think is going to be victorious for the men tomorrow? I'm going to go Dimitri Vandenberg. I just think his form in this tournament a lot of people have been saying you know he's he's not got a great record against MVG. We know that. He didn't have a great record against Peter Wright either. And we know so much is said about how he performs up on that stage mentally and you know he goes through his zen routine and things like that but he is finding a way to eliminate those demons from his game and his finishing has been rock solid i don't see anyone stopping him he's only lost one match at the match play and i think that will still be intact come the end of this tournament i would love that <laughs> big fan too is there any specific player that you really enjoy watching that just springs immediately to mind and why i'm a ferretette <laughs> I am a Johnny Clayton super fan. I'm a Dave Chisnell super fan as well. Always have been, always will be. I absolutely love them. When they are at their scoring and finishing best, they are two of the most exciting to watch. And I'm going to throw Andrew Gildon in there because who doesn't love Goldfinger? <laughs> and finally, if the sky was the limit on what you could do with your career, football, darts-wise, other sports, you know, sky's the limit, what would you want for yourself in the future? I've always said just to be a reputable journalist and broadcaster, someone who people can trust, but also someone who gives advice and tries to help other people break into this industry. Um, I think that's something that's incredibly important, especially as someone who's had to overcome trials and tribulations to get to this position I think it's in, it's very important to me to help other people get to where they want to be in this industry but in terms of myself reporting on Soccer Saturday and being a reporter at the darts they were the ultimate goals for me and also reporting on the snooker as well they're the three sports that I absolutely love watch them week in week out and just to continue doing this and and you know try and learn every day you learn something new in this industry <laughs> whether that's technical whether it's about a player and just to keep learning keep developing and hopefully entertain people <laughs> perfect thank you so much for your time thank Abby. you very much thanks again to our sponsor dart wolf and an extra special thanks to all of our guests for their time and a good luck to them all as they play in the event tomorrow